on behalf of my boss, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, we are most appreciative of uh, what the DG NIDA has done, and I encourage you to redouble your effort in the future. If you do something today and I commend you, by tomorrow you are anticipated to do more than that. When you get commendation today, tomorrow if you repeat the same, you will not get the same commendation. So by implication, you are ought to redouble your effort and ensure that your success of today is going to be ridiculed by you based on your success to, by tomorrow. And your success of tomorrow is going to ridicule your success of today. So today ridicule that of yesterday. And tomorrow will ridicule your success of today. So this is what is anticipated uh, from you. And I wish you all the best along with your team, uh, the management, and uh, also the board uh, working along with the management to ensure that uh, this uh, success is attained. Furthermore, we are here to commission at least three projects. Firstly, the digital center here, which accommodates, among others, number one, computer emergency response and readiness center. It is an upgrade. We earlier had computer emergency response and readiness team. As we all know, when you deploy facilities to promote cyber security, you need to upgrade the facilities from time to time. This is an upgrade with world-class facilities of computer emergency response and readiness team. And if you look at com computer emergency response and readiness team, is in alignment with uh, the three priority areas of our boss president, Muhammad Buhari, that is to promote security. Today, there are many challenges with regards to security based on what is happening online. So with com computer emergency response and readiness teams, we will be able to be the watchdog of federal government of Nigeria, monitor potential cyber crime attacks on our country, come up with policies and strategies to see how we can uh, prevent our country from the attack or at least reduce it to the minimum of what we can. And I think this is uh, highly commendable. Secondly, is Digital Media Studio, which is another project, which is also in alignment with the three key priority areas of President Muhammad Buhari, and also the virtual conference. Part of uh, the programs and projects of this administration that we plan to achieve through digitalization is to ensure that these three key priority areas are well established to the best of our ability. Number one, economic development. Number two, security. Number three, anti-corruption. These are the three key priority areas of President Muhammad Buhari. Through government digital services, we will be able to attain most of them. And this is uh, highly commendable. And uh, in addition, part of what is going to be unveiled today is the new logo of the National Information Technology Development Agency along with the mission and vision of the agency as well. This logo has been changed because of the fact that the policy of government in the ICT sector has changed as well. Before the policy we had been working on since 2001 to 2019, most probably around October, was national IT policy. As the DG said, it has become obsolete. The whole world has gone digital. It is no more about IT policy, but rather digital economy policy. And that is what brought about the idea of redesignating the ministry from Ministry of our Communications to Ministry of our Communications and Digital Economy. That was as a result of my interaction with the PAMSEC on one hand and directors of the ministry on the other. After that, we spent a week with the chief executives of uh, the parastatals under the ministry discussing on how to come up with effective policies for the sector. Part of what we agreed on, there was a need to bring digital economy. 
We wrote a proposal to Mr. President. I delivered the proposal. Mr. President reviewed it, got more input, and he finally approved the need to bring digital economy. And we have been mandated to develop national digital economy policy for a digital Nigeria. We did that. So the journey started just a week after we assumed duty. By, 20, by 17 October 2019, the mandate of the ministry had already been designated to accommodate digital economy. By 28 November 2019, Mr. President was in the International Conference Center to approve our, or rather to launch and unveil our national digital economy policy for a digital Nigeria. And uh, this is what brought about the change of uh, this logo. The previous logo was only to identify ICTs with some maybe key elements of ICT. Now it is not about just ITCT. It is about digital transformation. It is about digital technology. It is about digital economy. So it is because of this, there is need to rebrand all the parastatals under the ministry and we started by rebranding the logo of NIDA and we are here today to launch and unveil it. And uh, I think this is also highly commendable. Logo is key to the success of each and every institution. As they say, when logo is good, it grabs attention. Secondly, it gives a very strong first impression. And thirdly, it conveys what an organization does. So it is because of this your logo is key to your success. In addition to your vision and your mission. Your mission is what you do every day. Your vision is what you aim to achieve. So you do your mission every day in order to achieve your vision. Your vision is just like your dream. What you want to achieve in the future. It is because of this in order to align with the national digital economy policy and strategy, we approve the change in logo and at the same time, the vision and mission of uh, NIDA. Prior to that, NIDA and NCC had been mandated to create a department that will focus on promoting digital economy. That has already been achieved. As I'm talking to you today, we have an independent committee in NCC which has been named as Digital Economy Department. And, uh, and also, we have an independent department in NIDA which has been named as Digital Economy. This was conveyed to the board of the two parastatals and they have already implemented. And this is also highly commendable and is very relevant to our discussion today. So what I'm emphasizing here the focus of the world is no more on just ICT, but rather on digital economy. Before COVID-19 pandemic, World Economic Forum had predicted that by 2022, a minimum of 60% of the world economy was going to be digitalized. But with this COVID-19 pandemic, that has been reduced, that most probably by the end of 2020, a minimum of that 60% could be achieved meaning saving at least two years. And this is what uh, has motivated us also to redouble our effort. Earlier, our national digital economy policy and strategy, the plan was to achieve within 10 years, 2020 to 2025. But with this pandemic, we are trying to fast track and see how the entire policy could be implemented lately by 2025. We are planning to save a minimum of uh, five years. And so far, so good. Some of the targets we set for ourselves to be attained by 2023, we have already achieved them. Like in the telecommunication sector, our brother EVC is here. Some of the issues we were able to resolve as part of our targets in national digital economy policy and strategy had been lingering for over 13 years before we came to the sector. Like the issue of right of way, issue of critical national infrastructure. The target set to us by the stakeholders is to resolve the issue within three years. I'm glad to say that I'm less than one year in office, but we have already addressed the issues. <laughs> the 
this credit is not for the minister as you usually attribute the credit to me. Firstly, the credit should go to our boss president Muhammad Buhari, who has found us worthy for appointment to occupy the positions we have occupied. So whatever we do, we have been doing that on behalf of our boss president Muhammad Buhari. We have never campaigned for any office. It was the president who went around the country campaigning, making promises. When he won election, he appointed all of us to come and support him to deliver the mandate. So whatever we do, we are not doing it for ourselves, but we are doing it on behalf of our boss president Muhammad Buhari. And whatever we do, we ensure that project is in alignment with his own priority areas. And secondly, if we deserve any credit, that credit should not come to the minister alone. One person cannot make a team. A team comprises many people. And I use the opportunity to commend my colleagues in the ministry that at least we have improved their performance significantly. Only last week, there was a competition under the office of the head of civil service of the federation in which 168 teams participated from all the ministries of, of the federal government with all sense of humility, Federal Minister of Communications and Digital Economy won the first position. <laughs> Federal Minister of Communications and Digital Economy won the second position. And Federal Minister of uh, Communications and Digital Economy won the third position. So the first, second and third prizes were taken away by the ministry, among all other ministries. And there were 168 teams participated. Our team won first, second and third positions, and which I think is highly commendable. In addition, the boards of the parastatters, they have been very supportive to the policies of the federal government through the ministry. We commend them for sitting properly to ensure that the policies are implemented. Furthermore, the chief executives, EVC, NCC, DG, NITDA, MD, Galaxy, MD, NICH, COMSAT, PMG, NIPOST, head of USPL. All of them have been working day in, day out to ensure that any policy that comes up is implemented. Our position is to come up with the policy, give policy direction and supervise. So far, so good. However, as you all know, I demand a lot every day. I always push. When I push you, it doesn't mean you are not performing. That is my nature. What is required to be implemented in one year, I may ask you to do it in 30 days. That has been my nature. So I'm always pushing them. And I believe they now understand my nature. They sit properly and we don't have any serious complaint to make. So if there is any credit that we deserve after that of our boss, so that credit should be shared among my colleagues here, the CEOs and the chairmen and members of uh, the board and we appreciate their commitments, and we wish them all the best. Finally, this is the third batch of uh, the series of projects that have been commissioned by the ministry. Why are we doing that? As I earlier said, many beneficiaries of our projects sometimes do not know that projects exist in their communities. You establish a computer center in a school, and you will find out some students of the school are not even aware of it. These projects are for public. It is because of this we always try to inform the public about the projects of the federal government of Nigeria being executed by the ministry and the parastatters. So when we commission the project, many citizens will be aware that this project exists. And if they need to patronize it, they will be able to do so. Computer Emergency Response and Readiness Team is key to our cyber security. Cyber security is pillar number six in our own national digital economic policy and strategy, which has eight pillars. Developmental regulation, number two is a digital skills, number three is a solid infrastructure, number four service infrastructure, number five digital services promotion and development, Number six, soft infrastructure. Number seven, digital society and emerging technologies. Number eight, indigenous content development and promotion. So if you look at it, cyber security is very relevant to pillar number eight. And I think uh, 
is very important for the country to know that our SAT has been upgraded and we will continue to monitor potential attacks on our country and notify institutions. Usually advisory note is confidential. You don't make noise that this institution is under attack. We only escalate and let them know. And this is the best way to handle and we'll continue to do that confidentially without making noise. When it comes to digital media studio, it will be a long way also in conveying what we have been doing to our citizens. And at the same time, building their capacities through training and uh, many more. When it comes to virtual conference, it will facilitate virtual learning, which is part of government digital services that we are all promoting. We have national e-government master, uh, master plan in place. So this is part of it.